All right, let's go ahead and speed up PixInsight. You're like, what? We can speed up PixInsight? Yes. So the first thing we want to do is open up PixInsight. And the very first thing uh, to do to get an idea of how good our system is, is we can go up to the top here and go to Script, Benchmarks, and then run a quick benchmark. Uh, you just go ahead and hit Enter. And then you're going to go ahead and run the benchmark. And this takes a second, so I'll speed up the video during this time. Awesome. So here we go. We have our first run. Uh, yes. Um, so in here, we're going to see that the total is 7228 for the total benchmark. CPU is 8973 and the swap is 4018. So what you want to do is you can just drag it over here and create a clone real quick. Uh, why don't I create a clone? There we go. All right. So here's our clone of our first run. So we're going to make our very first change to speed up the CPU. So the first thing we're going to do is open up terminal and I will put together the commands and show a screenshot and you can pause the video here for Windows, Ubuntu, and Mac. All right, so I'm gonna open up my notes app because I got my cheat stuff here. So this is how to speed it up. There's a little command you run, you run it in terminal real quick, and it'll tell you that we have 12 logical CPUs on this Apple. So what we wanna do now is go to, and we'll just close those out because we don't need those. So we wanna go to um, edit again, global preferences, and this time we're going to go to parallel processing and threads. And as you can see, the maximum number of read threads is one because it doesn't know how many um, threads you have. So we know we have three, uh, 12 because we just ran that command. And if you ran it on Windows or Ubuntu, you have your numbers. So just load them in here for both. Just put 12 in both or whatever your number is. And then we're going to go ahead and apply it globally and then close out. And then next, we're going to go to uh, script again, benchmarks, and we're going to run that benchmark one more time. So again, I'll speed through the video. All right. So the second run ran. Uh, the second one ran. The second run ran. <laughs> I don't know if that sounds right or not, but we're going to stick with it. So as we can see here, our total went up just a little bit. We went to 7436, and our CPU jumped up a little bit, and our swap jumped up just a smidge. So we'll go ahead and uh, drag and create this again. And that way we can keep track of one and two. So we'll close this. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and create some swap space. So the system already has a swap drive that it uses, but what we're going to do is give it some more swap space so it can do some more swapping and speed up a little faster. Um, so to do that, what you can do is you can go to edit and then global preferences. And then now we're going to go to directories and network. And in here, it's already got a swap storage directory that it created on the operating system. Well, we can add some more. So we can go to add. And then what I like to do is I just like to go to my uh, personal folder and documents. And then I'll create a new folder in here. And I'll call it swap. And then in the swap folder, I'll create a folder called one. And then open it. And then it'll attach. And what you want to do at this point is um, uh, apply it globally and then test it again and again and again as you add swap folders. I don't know the right number for your computer. Each computer is a little different. Um, I'm running, uh, I don't remember what version of uh, Apple right now. Um, so I just got an update not too long ago, so I'm on 11.4. So before, and I'm, the reason I'm showing this is because before when I was on 11.3 and I was re using PixInsight 1.8.7 uh, or 1.7 before the 1.8 just came out, I used to use three swap spaces. Well, now I found that after doing the test and running it over and over again every time, so to add a swap directory, run the benchmark, add a swap directory, add the bench, uh, run the benchmark. Um, after doing that, I found that my actual sweet spot for swap space is actually two. So in here, I'm going to go ahead and just add my extra folder. And then I'm going to go ahead and apply it. So I have my two swaps. I found that when I go to three swaps, I don't get as good as uh, benchmark speeds as I do with two swaps. So we'll go ahead and just, like I said, we'll apply it, close it. And then we're going to go ahead and run that script again uh, under the benchmark. So again, find your sweet spot. Maybe yours is three, maybe yours is four. I've read online some people have had as much as 11 depending on how high-end their system is. So here we go. 
All right, so our final benchmark ran, and here we can see that we increased from 7436 to 7800 for the total. Uh, my CPU went down a little bit, 8669, but my swap went up to 5532. So it's it's a fine balance on in terms of like what you want to do in terms of changing those uh, swap directories. Like I said, you can add more, you can add less. Um, you know, maybe one is better. And my swap is still pretty decent, but I don't know. I, I like these settings. It runs pretty good. Um, you know, it's the CPU is a little better here. Um, but again, the total overall, you know, it's almost 600, uh, almost 600 points more on the total. So, you know, it's it's a give or take. You got to find where your sweet spot is. You know, do you want more swap? Uh, in the swap, what it helps with is kind of like a little extra memory. So like when it's running stuff, it runs the processes a little better. Or do you want more CPU so you can handle more processes at once? Um, I, you know, I'll, I'll have to do some more testing myself personally uh, to, to see if there's a difference. But, you know, play with it and find what your sweet spot is. And, you know, again, hopefully this video was helpful.